Um, and end of November, beginning of December, I think, of, of 2011. And I came back again in 2012, getting ready for the London Olympics. Unfortunately, my foot broke down just before the Olympics, so I wasn't able to, to take part. But I, I, I loved running in Kenya. I found it hard because uh, a lot of my career, I was training in the French Pyrenees and it was around 2,000 meters, but E10 is higher than that and I did find it tough, um, but I, I felt that it really helped me. Um, and then I came back in 2014 and 15, but more as a, a team manager, although in 2015, I had a personal goal to run the London Marathon on my repaired foot so that I, I could I'm also run. Um, and sorry. And um, so I came out to, to Kenya looking after the team, but also profited from that to, to be able to do some training, to be able to, to run comfortably and enjoy my, my final competitive marathon. Well, um, so my earliest memory uh, of watching uh, a marathon was watching Ingrid Christensen set the world record in 1985 in London. My dad was running in the race and I watched her run by. And so in my mind, there was never a question that it wasn't possible for a European athlete to, to race with the, the Kenyans and Ethiopians. And when I got to the marathon, I really found my event because on the track all the time, uh, as Sally and I were saying today, often it was me and Sally at the front trying to make the pace and then at the end, the Ethiopians just sprint past. Um, but in the marathon, it was a different story. Uh, and so I was honored to, to um, race with Catherine Dereba in Chicago and to take the record. And I know Catherine really wanted to be here today also, but she had to work, so she couldn't come. But she really was supporting this campaign a lot. Um, and I continue to race with, with Catherine a lot. So yeah, I think world records, it, it's great to see the progression of the sport and uh, they're there to be broken. And whether they, they stand for 16 years or one year, it's, it's not really ours to control. Certainly now I can't go and get it. Being inspired by when I was growing up that I remember running with, I ran with Sally Barsocio today and I ran many times with Sally through my career and consider her a great friend. Uh, Mary Katani was also there. So to see so many athletes come out to, to try and, and raise awareness today and we hope that everywhere across the world that people will hear this story uh, and get behind it with the, the funds through Families on Track. Uh, my uh, organization might really set up just to get families running together in the UK. We're already close to $10,000 um, that we're raising there and hopefully that will keep going up. Many years ago and uh, today we brought it along and, and uh, just in memory of, of uh, Julie and uh, this was from the 2002 Olympics and, uh, and the theme for the 2002 Olympics was light the fire within and uh, Toby has spoken a little bit about that and that's with each one of us we have that opportunity to light the fire from within to really make a difference in the lives of someone else and that's that's what our calling is is to help one another and to uh, to be a support to one another and to find ways to uh, lift each other and uh, so it's just great that, uh, that, that we have that opportunity to, uh, to be, be a part of that. The first step in the building of the new, the, uh, the first ever um, children's cancer hospital in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, this cause is so like, dear to my heart because in 2020 I was diagnosed with cancer. And after one week of being diagnosed, I was already given treatment and here, like kids can't even ever get treatment when they get cancer. Um, the survival, so in developed countries, one out of 10 children die of cancer. But it makes me so sad that in sub-Saharan Africa, nine out of 10 children die of cancer. It, the, the odds are completely flipped. Um, so I am, can't even start to imagine how many children's lives will be saved by this hospital. And